Remember when Greenspan said irrational exuberance in 96? Yeah. Uh, That's what was Larry like, was saying. Four, We're like, yeah. Yeah, it was almost four years later when the thing actually burst, you know. Exactly. In in 1999, there were 117 IPOs that doubled mm -hmm. on their first day. We haven't seen, listen, we haven't seen anything like that. You know, I went I went through the the numbers over the weekend and you know, you had stocks back then with with no no sales. Forget about earnings, but they didn't have sales. And and you wow. know, listen, I was there. I was a new broker, and we'd go in and we'd buy JDS Uniphase, and it would go up so much, and it was just so easy. And then and then on the way down, it was really bad. So I committed that I never wanted to get caught like that mm -hmm. on the way down. But you know, the the PE right now for the Nasdaq is forty two. The PE at the top in 2000 was 175. You know, NVIDIA made more money in 20 days last quarter than Cisco made in all of 2000. Welcome to the Rose Show podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I have the pleasure of being here with two of my good friends from Twitter or X, as we call it. We have Marty, Master Marty, and we have That's Larry, good. Blue Chip Larry. There they are. They're both in their own corner over there. <laughs> Excellent traders and both have amazing insights about the markets and stocks. And they have quite a few winners under their belt. So I'm so excited to talk to you about markets. So let's start with an overview. But first, I want to know how you guys are doing. How are you doing over there in Arizona, Marty? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, don't let the Golden Gate Bridge fool you. <laughs> It's just okay, the background. How about you, Blue Chip Larry? How you doing over yeah. there in New England? Every everything is good. The uh, we're about to set the clocks forward. The days are going to get longer, nice. and uh, it's everything is good. Nice. Awesome, and the markets are great as well. From last time we met, um, not recently, but the previous time, the other year. So we got some exciting things to talk about today. So let's start with you, Master Morty. Um, what are your thoughts on the market, the, the trend, master. the breath, and everything you're seeing out there? The master of disasters. <laughs> um, you know, the overall theme for me is I'm, I'm bullish. I, I probably shouldn't be as bullish as I am, but um, can I share a screen? Okay. Uh, okay, I got Shake Shack. I was watching Shake we'll go right through 100 today. It's like wow. impressive. Yeah. I just wanted to go to the NASDAQ. First of all, so I, I can see the chart, but I can't see you. You can see the chart? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I just go through a couple of things. First, I'll go to the weekly chart where it made this top here in uh, November of 2021, 20, right? It's 16,212. And it's kind of, you know, done this cup with handle thing where it, it broke out last year. And now it's approaching new highs. It hasn't made new highs like the S&P and the Dow. I don't really consider the Dow much of an index. It's 30 stocks. It changes all the mm -hmm. time. NASDAQ's a broader. And a lot of people like to use the Qs or the SPY, but NASDAQ's a little broader uh, index. And this is the one I use. But anyway, it's just got this cup with handle pattern. Uh, and it's broken out last year. It's just trading uh, beautifully. This is textbook stuff right now. So we had this follow through day um, in November, and it's been rallying ever since. Uh, let me click on this line pin here. As you can see, it's just pulling back and getting support at its moving mm -hmm. average every time. And we're just mm -hmm. having these little, you know, two, three, four percent pullbacks, and then it's just popping right back up. So, um, you know, somebody was asking me, um, you know, how long could this go on? And I, I, you know, I said it could go on for a long time. If you just look at uh, 2017, that was the year when we had. Um, you know, just these little pullbacks all year long. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's going to do the same thing, but that's what it's been doing. Okay, 2017, the biggest pullback was like 4%. And uh, it just kept grinding higher and higher and higher. And I know the interest rates are different now. And I would hear all the bears, um, but these just these little pullbacks the whole year. And I know the bears are saying, you know, there's a bubble, it's overinflated, but they're always going to say that when the market goes up, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so... I'm thinking that we're in something like, um, well, so far, we're definitely in something like 2017. Very um, nice. Yeah, it's mirroring it, it, you know, so far. I mean, 
it, it started in, in November. And this year we had this pullback at the start of the year, you know, tax law selling or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then um, it, it's been just, well, it's only been two months, but it's just having these little mild pullbacks. And so a couple of people at my uh, site just asked me, how long could this go on? And it could go on all year. Yeah. I'm not saying that it will, but it, it can because there's a precedent there. It has done that before. So I'm, I'm bullish, um, you know, until, you know, I just, I just follow the trend. I'm not very smart. I just, you know, I think, <laughs> you know, when a third grader could figure out that, you know, from 12, uh, 50, uh, five, 12,543 to, you know, 16,000, that's kind of an uptrend. So we're going to stick with the trend because the trend is our friend. And uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, you know, I, I just follow it every day and if things change, I'll change with it. But so far, that's what I'm seeing. And, I love uh, that. Trend yeah. is our best friend. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to patent that. I just came up with it right now. <laughs> yeah. First, first time I've ever heard that, Marty. That's yeah. we gotta write that down. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have to make note of that. We're, we're, uh, we're original content here, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Larry, give us your thoughts. Um, what you what you're seeing is something similar. Yeah, so so I'm seeing the same thing. You want me to share my screen real, Please real do. quick? Okay, let's go here. Let's go. Can you see my screen? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing the same thing that Marty's seeing. And the, the cool thing about Marty and I is, is we pretty much follow a lot of the same process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's different ways to skin a cat, but, but Marty and I pretty <laughs> much take the same way to get there. So I really focus on spy and triple Q, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that just because that's really the stocks that I trade and the right. stocks that I hold, but they pretty much look the same, whether it's the NASDAQ composite triple Q. It's got the same thing that Marty's talking about. It's just got a, a textbook uptrend. It's got higher highs. It's got higher lows. The pullbacks have held really right around the 20 day moving average, which is that blue line. We've got four rising moving averages. But the thing that I like the best right now is we're seeing there, we're seeing the, the breadth in the market really start to expand mm -hmm. because yesterday, there was new highs in Russell 2000 growth, biotech ETF, oh. retail ETF made a new high, industrials are making new highs. You know, what we're seeing is it's it's not just tech. Right now, the, the tech ETF out of 11 uh, sectors is number seven or eight in relative strength. Industrials are leading, financials are leading. So, so what I see, and you see the equal weight s p that's close to new all-time highs so i'm um, i'm very encouraged by the the breadth that i see and the participation in the small caps and the biotechs it's just very strong right now well said absolutely we see a broadening for sure and um what we're noticing is some type of rotation you know, we had for a while there, you know, the mag seven, everyone was, that was the, the place to be. And it seems to be now money is spreading out to like you have the equal weight and you see more mid caps, small caps seems to be more of a risk on environment. And as we see others, uh, very nice trend there. I mean, it's like, like, like Marty said, don't overthink it. You know, right. you just look at it and you look where the chart's going and you see it's, it's heading up. Um, it's it's actually both of you have a way of simplifying everything and eliminating the noise, which is so important because these charts and all this talk and all the social media and the CNBC can get, you know, very noisy. So yeah. you just simplify it there. And I, I love that. You know what it, you know what it is? And I can probably speak for Marty, but we'll let Marty speak, too. But so I started in the markets in 98. And I've lost money in a variety of assorted ways. Mm -hmm. I've pretty much <laughs> lost money, you know, over over 27 years or 26 years, <laughs> however long it is. I've lost money in every way conceivable, you know, long, short, over trading options. So basically what I did is, is, you know, through trial and error, I said, OK, you know, I lost money doing that. So let's not do that. Let's not mm -hmm. do this. And over time for me. It's just been an elimination process where I said, okay, you know, here's my trades where I make money. Here's my trades where I've lost money. You know, let's do more of this stuff and let's do less of what doesn't work. And, and for me, 
just like Marty says, follow the trend, accept that the market knows more than, than any single one of us. The collective wisdom of the market and the trend is smarter than we are. So why mm -hmm. would I fight that would be like, you know, why would I go into the ring to fight Mike Tyson? You know, I'd rather be on the side of the strength than, than against it. So just like Marty said, I think it's easier to follow the trends and, and just go with the flow and adjust when you need to. Well said. And it's not about shorting the trend, right? Just because we see momentum uh, yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that that is something that's going to come back down, especially when we see the significant trend and strong early innings, I think some people have called it of a bull market. Yeah. Um, definitely. Um, so let's talk, let's go into this sectors. Um, and you mentioned the industrial tech, we have biotech. Marty, would you like to talk about biotech and what sure. you're seeing with XBI? I'll, I'll get started on that, but Larry, Larry talking just got my mind working about making mistakes, you know, especially- Oh, let's get into people. that. Yeah, I came into the market in 2020 and, and you know, it was easy because, you know, the you know, low rates and the stimulus from the government, you know, it was a just a confluence of the factors that made the market really rip so they thought it was easy and then we had the bear mark and they said this stuff's pretty tough they made a lot of mistakes lost a lot of money so what you need to do like larry says is just do some post analysis on your trades and find out where you're going wrong what are you doing are you chasing performance are you buying too high and then selling on pullbacks are you you're you're, you're selling when you should be buying and buying when you should be selling because i like selling into strength you know you mentioned shorting I don't short strength, but I'll sell into some strength mm -hmm. offensive seller because sometimes when you buy something like you mentioned SMCI earlier, you need to buy it at you know 300, whatever it goes to a thousand, it starts becoming too big for your portfolio and you need to sell some of that stuff. Um, that's a nice problem to have. But as far as making mistakes and um, you know, that's a good way to learn. That's the best way to learn. But do post analysis on every one of your trades, find out what you're doing wrong and eliminate those mistakes and you'll become a better trader over time. Uh, believe me, I have the scars from, you know, I have scar tissue from lots of uh, many, many, many mistakes, like Larry mentioned. So I just had to mention that. Mm, learn from your mistakes. Don't make them over and over. And never give up. Oh, you never give up. You know, that's, that's goes without saying. I you love that. Give, we all uh, learn from our mistakes. So you just want to stop <laughs> repeating the same mistakes. It's so important. <laughs> um, but yeah, selling into strength. Excellent points there. Um and and also you and him both mentioned about the rotation. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's pretty um, it's pretty textbooks, pretty common that the first year of a bull market, or did I say bull market, of a new uptrend, mm -hmm. is that you have those like safer stocks, you know, that do well. And then as the bull market matures, I said it again, mm -hmm. then it You're spreads <laughs> out, like Larry mentioned, it's spreading out everywhere, like wildfire to different areas. And uh, I'm not going to say you can't help but make money, but if you're in the right sector, I mean, you're going to do pretty well. I mean, there's still still a stock pickers market and you have to be in the right stocks, but it's really spreading out. We're seeing a lot of different uh, areas of the market doing well. So that that to me makes me more bullish than just, you know, the NASDAQ going higher as it's just spreading out. Like you mentioned, industrials and biotech, just a lot of different areas that are doing well. And it's going from the mega cap to the smaller and mid cap. Um, if you look at the MDY, the um, mid cap 400, that chart looks really good as well. Um, now, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to talk about the different sectors. Like we said, rotations going oh, okay. on oh, no. and everyone talked about MAG7. We know tech has been hot. Yeah, yeah. Let's no, talk you, asked, about... you asked me about biotech. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because you've so been doing last, great over you, there. We were going to do this last week or I was going to do this. You, you, you notified us a couple of weeks ago and I was going to talk yeah. about biking. And now if I mention Viking, it's like, oh, this guy's just jumping on the bandwagon. <laughs> so I'm just going to say that Viking has four readouts in the first half of um, 2024. The first one was yesterday. I think probably the best one was yesterday. And the stock jump. And um, so anyway, they have really good, you know, weight loss or in the weight loss category. Mm -hmm. which, you know, Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk. And those are two fantastic, you know, if you want a, a safe drug stock, I think those two are good selections. Um, but if you want to speculate, Viking is definitely one to speculate with. Um, so now it's going up because of speculation of a buyout, right? Like a Merck or a Pfizer is going to buy them out. Now the stock went up to like a, like an 8 billion market cap. So they're going to have to pay about 
12 to 15 billion for for uh viking right now and the ceo of that company he he's done this before he's, he brings uh biotech companies to a market and um you know just just for the purpose the sole purpose of just you know having a buyout so i think that's pretty much their intention is just having one of these bigger companies buy them out here so um anyway i just i just bought it yesterday I just jumped on the bandwagon <laughs> You've been talking about this one yeah, for a long yeah, yeah. time. You're going to get sick of me talking about it. Anyway, another biotech stock that I like, and you know, kind of speculative, but uh, TG Therapeutics, they reported mm. earnings this morning, and it's a heavy short interest, which kind of scares me because the shorts got to know something, right? They're not stupid. Mm -hmm. But um, they're going to be profitable, you know, with this uh, multiple sclerosis drug that they launched last year. And the, the launch is going pretty well. I mean, I, I'm sure the longs would like to see it go a lot faster, but they're delivering, you know, triple digit, you know, sales growth, and they're going to have earnings this year. So um, I think that's a quality speculative biotech stock to look at. Do your own due diligence, of course. Another one is IOVA. Mm. And they just got a drug approved. If you looked at that one, that one went a lot you know, higher than I thought it would as well. So the biotechs are doing well. The XBI is doing well. And the last one is AQST. It's a, mm -hmm. you got to do your own due diligence on this. It's like a $3 stock. Um, but I, I think I sent you the presentation that they did a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. Yeah. And um, pretty impressive. Yeah. I think they're going to uh, do pretty well. And they have, you know, readouts coming uh, as well in the first half of 2024. And no, th those are really dangerous too, because if they don't go well, you know, it's either the penthouse or the outhouse mm -hmm. or the box and you don't want to have, you know, where your position sizing is too big and then you get slammed like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not fun. Wake up and be like 50% down in one of your stocks that you have a big interest in. Uh, so you got to be careful with those speculative biotech names, but th those are four that I just wanted to share with you. Thank you so much. And we know NVO and Eli Lilly, those are yeah. some top ones as well in that yeah. sector. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I always tell people XBI, IBB, or um, Labu are different ways to play yeah. it with the ETF. A little more safety there than individual yeah. names. Yeah. Um, so you're not um, going to get slammed with the uh, earnings or a, a phase two trial that fails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Very well said. Thank you so much for sharing that, Marty. How about yeah. you, Larry? What are you What are you looking at? What are you focused on? Maybe the I know you've been talking about these industrials that, that have been pretty hot. Yeah, you know what it is. Well, I'm 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 a little old fashioned, <laughs> so I'm I'm still I'm still focused on these AI stocks. Oh, you know, but I so the that. you know just that's most <laughs> of my money right now is still AI. you know triple Q related. So Nvidia, mm. Meta some Microsoft, some Arista network. So, cause I, I do think that AI is, I think that we're early and you and I did the presentation last mm -hmm. week. You know, I, I think that we're, you know, if we had to look at the prior cycle, we're probably closer to the, you know, 1995, 96 range. I think there's a lot of growth to go, but outside of that, I like the industrial sector quite a lot. Can I bring up a few charts? Please, please do. We'd love I, to see your I'm, charts. You know, I'm a, you know how I'm Italian and we talk with our hands. I like to, I like to talk with my charts. I love so, it. <laughs> you know, the, the industrial sector, if we just start from the top down on the sector, we can see that that XLI, the sector ETF, is breaking out to a new all-time high. But the interesting thing is there's, there's some overlap from AI, from the data center build out, from the infrastructure build out, and the power grid build out because the you know this AI infrastructure it takes a tremendous amount of power to to do mm -hmm. all this and they've got to build these data centers they've got to heat and cool everything so mm -hmm. General Electric looks like an AI stock I mean if you look at that chart wow. this is GE which is you know mm -hmm. this is not the GE let's say of maybe 30 or 40 years ago but mm -hmm. but very strong if you look at a company like Eaton Corporation they're based over in Ireland and they're very big also wow. in the in the data center build out. And if you look at these daily charts, you know, the some of them look a little bit extended like GE. But mm -hmm. if you look at the daily chart, it's really just holding this 20 day moving average higher. 
It's holding the 50 day moving average higher. It's, you know, been strong. It's up what 19% year to date. I think the S and P is up 6% or so. So it's, it's outperforming the S and P, but there's a lot of these uh, train technologies is also based overseas. Mm -hmm. And, and you just have a lot of things, these, these data centers, it's a tremendous amount of construction. Also, you've got a lot of reshoring going on with, with the United States is bringing a lot of manufacturing mm -hmm. back over here because of some of the difficulties, you know, that we've run into overseas with some of that and, you know, being dependent on other countries for semiconductors and things like that. But that's, that's a really strong group overall. Uh, and, and when I look at these charts, the, the, as I go through, so every day, I screen all the large caps because that's really my focus about $10 billion and higher. Mm -hmm. And if, if we go through the industrial sector right now, there's probably 15 or 20 charts that look just like this. And, and the other positive from that is that's a good sign for the economy because, you know, for, you know, for a couple of years, about two years, the, the big thing in the media was, you know, pending recession, there's an impending recession coming. It, it's right around the corner and the leading economic mm -hmm. indicators were down and the yield curve and all this stuff. But, mm -hmm. but I just focus on the charts because as we both know, and as your viewers know, the stock market is a, is a forward looking discounting mechanism. So the stock market looks out three to six months into the economy. And that's why, you know, six months ago, when these industrials started to break out, that was a sign that the market itself is not expecting any type of recession. When you look at Nucor, which is, you know, steel maker, mm -hmm. this is the steel chart that's breaking out to new mm -hmm. all time highs as well. So when you see steel breaking mm -hmm. out, when you see home construction breaking out, mm -hmm. these these are all signs that the economy is in good shape. GDP came in this morning, three point two percent. Jobs market is very tight. And, and the biggest thing that I see is the economy actually is showing signs not of going into a recession, but actually reaccelerating mm -hmm. and picking up. And that's why I think you see these <laughs> stocks, you know, Home Depot is breaking out. These are all these are all important stocks and they're they're all sending the same message. Well said. I love that. Um, yeah, there's definitely reshoring, deglobalization, protectionism is going on, and we're bringing everything back to the U.S. Countries are taking care of themselves. So this is makes it perfectly makes sense and is in line with that thesis of what's going on. Home builders have been strong. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. thought we were going to have a real estate crash this year, and everyone know. I mean, we know that real estate takes a long time. It's a, it moves like a snail. So um, for anyone to think a crash was coming right away, um, you know, and then home builders surprised to the upside. Um, and then we have massive fiscal spending. So it seems that this recession, this long awaited recession, uh, look at that chart. Wow. Toll Brothers. Yeah. Um, and that beautiful trend. And uh, so we have, you know, reacceleration, like you said, and uh, industrials are right there at the core. Yeah. And, um, all of this. So. You know what I think it comes down to? As long as the jobs market is super tight, mm -hmm. if people are if people are working and they're making money, you know, they're going to spend money. The consumer is 70 percent of the economy. And I think that's the key. As long as, you know, we're working, we're making money, we're feeling good about stuff. And that's what's showing up in the market. People get their 401k statements right now. Mm -hmm. Their 401ks are probably right near the highs, you know. So, so overall, I think if people are working and they're feeling good, they're going to spend money in that, you know, that's what's showing up in these charts really everywhere. Yeah, yes. they have money, they're making money, so they're able to spend money. And uh, another one they're spending money on is beauty. I yeah. think uh, Marty knows quite a bit about the elf beauty. <laughs> Marty knows a lot about beauty, period. <laughs> Marty, tell us about this Elf Beauty, and uh, and I know you're, you know, people want to look good. You know, A N F, another hot yeah. one over there. Uh, um, boy, I mean, Larry mentioned a bunch of things that just triggered my mind, but um, go for it. What, what's it triggering? Well, well, you mentioned you talked about AI first, right? Mm -hmm. I'll put Elf here, so I won't forget about Elf. Um, you know, AI talking, you know, 
you, and you mentioned the crash heads and the bubble heads, and they're all out there being real negative, which I love. But you know, there, there's the debate of where are we at 1995 or 1999, just starting this AI revolution, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, you know, living through 95, it was really tangible, you know, because we could go online, you know, you got mail and all that. Mm -hmm. So we could really see it. You know, we go to Amazon and buy books. You know, it was a bookstore online, right? So, so it was really tangible. You go to Yahoo and look at your, you know, finances or sports pages or whatever on the Yahoo portal. So, so it was for consumers, but now it's more like business to business and not just business to consumer. So it's a lot, really hard for me to figure out like which software names are going to excel. I don't know which ones are going to be winners in AI. I mean, I heard Jensen talking um, just last week. They had their uh, mm -hmm. uh, conference call after his uh, you know blowout earnings report, right? Mm -hmm. And he mentioned like 10 software names. It was Oracle and ServiceNow. Now, and, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Dropbox and Box. And he mentioned mm -hmm. like 10 of them. And he said they're gold mines. They're sitting on gold mines and they don't even know it. Nobody even knows it. And it's hard for me, you know, so I just got to rely on charts, you know, the charts doing as the chart. you know, some of those industrials. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those software names are doing that as well. Of course, they sold off really hard in the bear market, but now we're seeing them with, you know, some earnings and sales and um, God, the charts are looking great. So, you know, I'd have to say we're probably in the early innings of this AI revolution, but it's not as tangible for me. It's a little, it's, it's a little harder to, um, you know, dissect. I think this, uh, but I, I would say we're definitely in the early innings of AI. Anyway, you're really going to go to ELF, right? Because <laughs> mm -hmm, we have tech. We have, you know, we talked about NVIDIA, SMCI. No oh, yeah. one's mentioned it yet. So we have to go through SMCI. Um, and, uh, but I know that, and you can feel free to talk about tech as well, but I know you've been all over this ELF. And you've been talking about this elf a long time. And um, those earnings were amazing. And like uh, Larry said, people have money and they're spending and they always spend on beauty. It's yeah. inflation, re recession resistant. Yeah, I'm going to say something sexist. I probably shouldn't, but it's not going to stop. It's okay, me. go for it. <laughs> My dad always told me, you know, you can never go broke betting on people's vanity, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, he said women's vanity because he's old yeah. school. But, you know, um, yeah, people want to look good. People are on Zoom, right? And they, so uh, the beauty, Ulta Beauty is another one. There's, um, but Estee Lauder was the the big winner for many, many years. And it's fallen on hard times. If you look at that chart, is it okay if I bring up a chart here? Please. Okay, so I'm going to go. You can see my chart now. Can you see my chart? Not yet. No. So I have to share again. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to share one more time. I'm going to share. There you are. We see it now. All right. So um, I got to get rid of this again. Oh. All right. We're going to go to, well, you asked about Elf, so I'll go to Elf. I'm going to forget about Estee Lauder. It's kind of a has-been. So the new generation, you know, these guys, uh, they they have like 1.3 million followers on TikTok. And that's, wow. that's kind of how, you know, the new generation, you know, that's how you advertise. That's how they, you know, they, they, um, Anyway, let's just look at the chart and forget about all the fundamentals and everything. So this thing had a big base here in, uh, okay, let me go back a little bit. COVID low was $20, okay? So, or even lower than that, I think it was like $9. Let's go to the COVID low. Uh -huh. What was it? Um, okay, $8, $7. So it is at 205 today. So whatever, you can figure that out, like 25%, mm -hmm. 250, whatever, 25 bagger, right? Yeah, 25. So it had this run and it had this um, nice base, right? This is a weekly chart here. So this is pretty, pretty, uh, what, 28 week base, then broke out and ran for a year. Okay, I'm not saying this is going to do this again, but it pretty much ran straight for a year, a wow. little over a year. And now it's formed another one of these bases. People are giving me a hard time like, oh, your elf is done. Elf sucks because it, you know, it, it crossed below its 50 and traded down to its 200, which, you know, stocks are going to do that. So all the profit takers took profits and then it, it, you know, now it has some new buyers form this cut pattern and it's just been running ever since that 140 level. And like I said, now it's a 205 today. So if I go back to the daily chart, you know, you can see this, you know, consolidation here, uh, the shakeout before the breakout. And now it's just running and uh, going through 200. I thought it would have trouble with 200, but uh, Elf uh, is not having trouble with 200. So um, definitely one of my, uh, you know, 
stocks that like SMCI I got too big, so you had to sell some of it, right? Mm, that's a good problem to have. Speaking yeah. of SMCI, what are your thoughts? It's been a hot stock lately. Yeah. And you know, you and I have been talking about it since 22. Um, what um, are your thoughts on that? Okay, I'll bring up SMCI again. Can you see my chart there? Mm -hmm. All right, so SMCI, you know, it had... I'll go to the weekly. I like looking at weeklies or even mm -hmm. the month. Wow, look at that. You, you can see it's a it's a late stage base, okay? Uh, you know, you can see all these different bases that it climbed, right? Kind of a stair stair stepper. And then it had this big run. And this is um this is what we noticed it back in like 20, early 22 back in mm -hmm. here. And it was just kind of choppy for me. I had trouble holding it, so I just bought it and then it went below where I'd normally sell and it just held on to it. It made this big run up to 350 and then sold off with earnings. Like it had a day where it was down 25% um, way back here, right here on, um, it was August of last year. Okay. It was down, uh, yeah, 20, 24% on August 9th. And what it did is it just chopped around for like six months, formed a base and then broke out there at that 357 level and ran pretty much straight to a thousand, right? And it was kind of gappy, you know, it was a gappy chart and um, it made this top and then pulled back. So everybody thinks it's a blow off top, which it is classic, um, but it's it's a top. I don't think it's the top. Um, I think this thing still has life in it. Larry has mentioned data centers and how important they are. Mm -hmm. We're in the early innings of AI and this is one of your leading data center plays. I, I, I have a hard time thinking this is over. Mm -hmm. and I think it's probably just going to fool the, the shorts and the longs and chop around like it did um, for a little while, probably not that long uh, before, you know, it resumes its uptrend and uh, continues higher. Uh, you know, I could see this thing. What is it? 800 today? Mm -hmm. 825. Yeah, I could see this thing making new highs, uh, you know, before not too long. You know, you know what they do is they they raise guidance and then they beat the raise guidance. Mm -hmm. and they, and they raise again. Yeah, for a long time. So he, I think he has pretty good uh, handle on his business. And uh, they'll be raising guidance again and, and crushing earnings again. And the stock will be going higher again. Because when it all comes down to, I mean, you could look at fancy charts and everything, but you got to have earnings, right? You got to have sales and earnings growth or, um, you know, eventually your stock's going to fall apart, right? And, and Stocks top when the fundamentals look their best and their fundamentals look very good right now. So there is an argument for that was the top, the blow off top. But if the fundamentals continue and they continue to accelerate sales and earnings growth, now they guided to what, 15 billion? Mm -hmm. And just last week, he said they, they could do 25 billion this year. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's got a lot of room there, provided that they get all, you know, supply, all the supply that they need. Yeah. You know, because they're uh, selling everything they can get their hands on. Same with NVIDIA. Same story, um, just at a smaller scale. Yeah, I'll add my two cents with SMCI since I've been here since, what, April of 22. Uh, we yeah. know the pattern with them. They're very yeah. conservative. They don't, you know, they don't speak too hyperbole. Like they, they deliver when they say something, they deliver and they exceed expectations. Yeah. And that's why they, yeah. they come out, they raise, and then yeah. they not only beat that, but they raise again. And yeah. so they just keep going. And if he's saying that, the CEO, right, we know they're most likely going to deliver based on their past behavior yeah. for the past two years. So we see that pattern. So he's speaking 15, 25 billion yeah. market cap. Where are we at? In the 40s right now? 40, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you know, two times sales, right? I mean, crazy, right? It's not an right? expensive company. No, it's not expensive stock. But uh, no, exactly. continue to deliver. I like to look at both sides, you know. Mm -hmm. The bears have their argument. It made that top, you know, mm -hmm. it's crash. It's going to go back to, you know, 350. And, um, you know, the the, the top stocks do top and their fundamentals look the best and they look great right now. So, you know, there's, there's arguments on both sides. So I could see both sides, but yes, I tend to be a little more bullish. <laughs> too Me <bottom>. too. <laughs> right? You have to see both sides. Agree with you completely. You got to always yeah. see the other well, side. When everybody agrees with you, that's when it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I disagree with you then. I'm just kidding. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so Larry, cybersecurity, you've been all over that CrowdStrike. Yeah. And I love it too. I'm yeah. also long CrowdStrike. Tell us what you're seeing. I mean, I've been a cybersecurity bull for years. Mm -hmm. uh, cybersecurity, we go CrowdStrike, Zscaler, Palo Alto, 
Give us your thoughts in that beautiful sector. So the the key thing with cybersecurity is it's something that you you just have to have. So if yes. you're a if you're a corporation and you want to let you know if you decide that you're going to slow down somewhere, cybersecurity is probably one of the last places that you're going to want to slow down because you can't afford, you know, your entire business reputation is based on security of your customers' data. So I I think cybersecurity is very high up the scale of where corporations have to spend money. There's a lot of earnings growth. We'll pull up, we'll go back to the chart. So we'll take a look at CrowdStrike. And here's one of the key things that I take a look at is I take a look at the the sales growth and the earnings growth, but I also like to see the projected five years. So on CrowdStrike, there's just a lot of green. So sales quarter over quarter up 35%, EPS quarter over quarter up 146%, EPS next year projected 27, 91. But I look at this EPS over the next five years because I like to get a good idea, at least of what the market forecast is based on trends. And 41% projected over the next five years, that's a big number. Now, obviously, nobody knows what the market's going to look like in five years. We don't know what the market's going to look like in five months. But they they do know they can forecast their business based on past trends and where the spending is right now in cybersecurity. So I've got CrowdStrike. I did get stopped out as Zscaler recently. Now that I got stopped out, it's probably going to go up 20% <laughs> after earnings. But that's, you know, that's just how it is. It's, you know, I always manage my risk first mm-hmm. because if, you know, losses are going to happen no matter what business you have. If you have a restaurant, if you've got a construction business, if you've got an insurance business, there's going to be losses along the way. Mm-hmm. You just want to try to keep your losses small. So when Palo Alto uh, guided lower last week, Zscaler hit my stop. I think Zscaler will be fine. I think Palo Alto, I think the whole group is going to be just fine. And once again, they're a, a key beneficiary of AI. You know, as all of this AI infrastructure gets built out, cybersecurity is a key component. But Palo Alto has had a, a, a nice bounce. Nancy Pelosi, she she moves she moves the markets. Mm-hmm. She bought some options, and that that was a good it was a good buy because Palo Alto uh, a week or two ago, I think they guided their revenues down by three percent, and the stock went down about twenty five percent. And that just seemed like a little bit of an overreaction where they guide revenues down 3%, the stock goes down 25%. But technically, it held right at the 20 to at the 200 day moving average. There's a lot of support on that chart in the 260 to 240 range. So, you know, for buyers down there, the the upside potential versus maybe a $10 stop is pretty good. But they've got, you know, EPS five years, 17%. These are all strong numbers. You know, Mm -hmm. something I think that's interesting, if we can talk about this for a second. So I posted this Mm -hmm. uh, last night. This is actually pretty interesting. So this is pretty cool. So I've got a podcast coming up tonight. And Ro, you and I did one last week. But, Mm -hmm. you know, because I see the same things that you guys see Mm -hmm. on the Internet. It's a bubble you yeah. know, it's and and when I talk to people, because you know, people will come on my Twitter and they'll be like, "Hey, it's a bubble," and it's like you know, two thousand, and I'll wow. be like, "Okay, well, give me the numbers." You know, what what numbers today mm-hmm. compared to two thousand mm-hmm. that make you think it's a bubble? And they mm-hmm. never have numbers. But just one thing quickly: this is the top ten stocks in the Nasdaq one hundred from March tenth of two thousand, and we we did a lot of research. This took us a couple of days to put together. But the bottom line is the top 10 stocks at the very peak in March 2000, they did 148 uh, in revenues. They did 148 billion, right? The top 10 today, 1.8 trillion. So we're we're doing today. Look at look at this Microsoft revenues, 227. Mm -hmm. I have Microsoft on my screen. I do Mm -hmm. 227 billion. Mm-hmm. in revenues, right? That's more than the entire top 10 stocks in the NASDAQ 100 did in uh, March 2000. So when I when I see stuff like that, because listen, I don't want to buy into a bubble. 
Mm. I don't want, I've got subscribers, you know, my subscribers rely on me mm. to, you know, to give them my best objective analysis. So I don't want to, you know, lead people off a bridge. Mm. And that's why I do a lot of research on this stuff. And when I look at it and I've got to come back to NVIDIA because NVIDIA really is, NVIDIA is the train that makes it all go. The stock right now trades at 26 times forward earnings. Their earnings growth is off the charts. Now, obviously, sales were up 265%. That can't continue, right? Yeah. We know that. Earnings per share were up 764%. That can't continue. But you've you've got this sovereign AI that's starting to, to get implemented where entire countries are building out their AI system. And mm -hmm. I look at AI like I look at Bitcoin or like I look at, at biotech or anything. All, all that I do is I measure what's my potential gain versus what's my risk. And I can buy anything. I could, you know, you can buy AI stocks, whatever, and you put a stop loss in. And if you're wrong, you get stopped out, you lose a little bit of money, and then you reevaluate the situation. But to me, the, you know, the, the bigger risk is, is not being long in some of these upside, because you look at that elf, what's elf up? Or Marty said it's a 25 bagger. Yeah. Right. If you find an uptrend and, and you take a position and the chart makes sense to you and you can manage your risk, the upside in, in anything, I don't care if it's if it's AI stocks or you know, drink, you know, soft drinks, whatever it is, the upside can be many multiples of what your risk is. And that's really what we're looking for. So if, if I can risk, you know, a dollar. And make five dollars over time or make two or three dollars and when i'm wrong i lose one dollar over time that's good math so i want to find uptrends mm -hmm. wherever they are i want to look for strong sales growth strong earnings growth and then try not to over trade those positions you know expect some volatility mm -hmm. but but you know try not to over trade i like to hold my positions longer so we've had spotify for a while now and this is the peter lynch you know, I look around and I saw Marty's got his can of Celsius, yeah. right? So I know that's that's coming up. But, you know, I use Spotify. I use I, I was talking to my wife the other day because we've got a lot of subscriptions because we got a lot of kids and stuff. And I told her, I said, if there was two subscriptions, I won't cut. It's Netflix and Spotify. There you, go. you know, we've got Paramount and we've got so much stuff you know, as far as these subscriptions, because all the kids like their stuff. But I said, there's two I won't cut. I won't cut Netflix and I won't cut Spotify. But if I had to, if I had to cut one, I'm not going to cut Spotify. Mm -hmm. I, I listen to Spotify 24 seven. I've got all my songs on here. We've got the family mm -hmm. plan where my kids have all their playlists and we can listen to each other's playlist. And in the old days, remember we had cassettes, mm -hmm. we had CDs, Marty and I had eight tracks, right? <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, then you had an iPod and then it was the coolest thing ever when you could put all your songs on an iPod. But now I can literally go on, on Spotify. There's any song I, I can listen to Jesse Livermore on Spotify. If I want to listen to some country music, whatever yeah. it is I want to hear, yeah. I can pull it up on Spotify. And I mean, the, the charts just been if we dial out to the weekly, just, you know, coming out of a, a very, very big base, mm -hmm. I think they've got a really good model set up mm -hmm. as far as, you know, what they're doing. But but I want to find stocks that make sense. And then when they start to work, try not to get hyperactive on, you know, over trading and worry because someone comes on Twitter and says that, you know, <laughs> the breadth, the breadth is bad for small cap stocks and, you know, wherever. So. That that's it. I, I think, I think, you know, longer holding periods lead to bigger wins over time, and it's also a lot easier on your on I think on your mindset to not yeah. every single day have to be you know yeah. trading in and out of this stuff. So I think there's you know there's just a lot of a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that's working, and if it keeps working, I'm gonna stay long, and if it stops working, then I'll reevaluate things. Very wise words there. If it's working, why change it? 
Um, and always, you know, um, have your stops, of course, and everything trailing stops. But yeah, if it's working, you know, why not continue? And I love when you're a customer of an investment of yours. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's so well from being a customer and loving Spotify, using it, you know, it's um, a real, you have real high conviction besides that chart being absolutely beautiful. I mean, yeah. look at that trend over there. It's, it's just beautiful. So, um, and that's, that's really great. Like, you know, Marty is a customer of Elf Beauty. So he, <laughs> uh, he's also a, a shareholder. So it makes yeah. sense over there, right? Um, you know, I, uh, I'm also a swing trader. I like holding, you know, for a few weeks, months, you know, uh, six months, a year or two, you know, it, you get a nice uh, trend like you do with that Elf Beauty, like we talked about 25 bagger. Um, that's a, that's a nice, um, position there. And then it's always about the risk adjusted returns. You don't want to have the greatest return for the least amount of risk. So it's, it's a balance there, but you want to have that upside potential there. And I saw your Spotify is a $50 billion market cap. It's funny. Um, actually Marty and I were talking back and forth and we we're trying to zero in on this rotation of the, you know, mid caps stocks and, you know, the smaller cap, the rotation from the mega down to the smaller. And I was just saying the $50 billion market cap seems to be a sweet spot. I think Z scalers around there, yeah. uh, maybe CrowdStrike, you know, all these are my favorites. Datadog is a little under that. Um, yep. These are all my favorite tech stocks. I'm, I'm such a tech person, um, but, um, and they're all around that range. So I really yeah. like that area for massive growth, you know, IPO within the past three, four years is beautiful. You know, you have that initial big growth coming out and then you have the AI revolution. Um, and, you know, you made a great point, Larry, about cybersecurity and AI. And what I've noticed and what I've read and what I've spoken to people about is that that with AI, there's a lot more cyber attacks. Yeah. So they use AI to attack and you need cybersecurity more than ever. And I've been a cybersecurity bull for years. I've been Zscaler since spring of 2020. I think it was May, their earnings um, right around that time period. I love Zscaler yeah. and um, great company. I'm hoping for good earnings this week. We'll see. They usually have a good pattern with earnings. Um, yeah. But, you know, I've, I've just, you know, having an e-commerce business and we have cybersecurity attack. We have cyber attacks like crazy and they've been increasing the past year or two. And yeah. so I just think cybersecurity is essential. It's no longer a luxury. It's essential, a core part of the business. And it, it's it's important for, you know, remote work, for businesses, for everything. So when I heard Palo Alto CEO saying there's fatigue, I was a little confused. I, I didn't understand that. Uh, because um, maybe they're losing market share. I don't know what it is, but uh, maybe something else is going on. But to, to see fatigue, I think if people cut that out of their budget, if businesses cut that, they're going right. to be very disappointed and they're going to be hurting themselves for the longer term. So um, I'm a cybersecurity bull, I guess you call me, uh, but I'm very strong with that. Um, sure. Yeah. So, you know, there's also other, you know, we talk about why spreading out, broadening of this uptrend, bull market, whatever you want to call it. Then we have the Celsius that I see Marty's drinking over there. Um, we have Celsius is reporting and Coco, great news, great mm -hmm. earnings, right? Beautiful over there. Why don't you, <laughs> there you go. He's a great model too, right? Marty, Marty's great at, at modeling these, uh, these drinks and these products. Um, so we have... Um, the drinks and all that. And then we have the crypto miners, Coinbase, and we see Bitcoin is, is trying to get to new highs in the 60s. Marty, give us your thoughts on all that. I know you've dabbled oh, all over there. Man, man I'm, I'm writing all this stuff down. I love I love what talking to Larry, man. I should talk to him more often. He's just triggering all these thoughts and I got to write him down because my uh, my mind doesn't work love like Love Larry. Can. Larry's awesome. <laughs> But I want to go back to Palo Alto first because I listened to their conference call. And when he mentioned the word fatigue, you know, that triggers the algos, right? When they, when he says there's fatigue in cybersecurity spending, he's a smart mm -hmm. guy. I think he knows that's going to trigger his stock to go lower. Mm -hmm. Just watch the, uh, I watched it all day the following day. It just sold off, you know, steady, just sell, 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 sell. So the stell programs were just triggered on. So I, I knew once it hit that bottom, it was going to bounce because you know, like Larry pointed out on the chart that it, it had support at that, what, what was it, 250 level, 240, 250 level. Mm -hmm. But when he said that, 
it made me think because I, I like CrowdStrike. I'm a, I'm a, I like to, you know, Palo Alto is a cash cow. It's a great company, great stock. Mm -hmm. And I know people who work at all these companies, Zscaler. But when he said that, I, I didn't believe it. And, and, I, and he was kind of smirking when he said it. I, I, I just. Body language is very telling. But uh, so I'm very interested now in the Zscaler report and the CrowdStrike report. I think for this environment, you mentioned how you have to have cybersecurity. You know, just think of the local municipalities and the uh, federal government. They can't have their stuff hacked. Right. And I was listening to a CrowdStrike CEO last night. And he was talking to there's going to be more than 50 global elections this year. And, and <laughs> obviously there's going to be a lot of disinformation and a lot, they're expecting a ton of just attacks, right? So um, I think this should be a really good year for cybersecurity. And, and uh, I don't know, the CEO just tanked his stock, uh, the CEO from Palo Alto Networks, and it seemed like it was a little coordinated. Um, but anyway, so that that makes me more interested in Zscaler, who reports tomorrow, I believe, and then mm -hmm. CrowdStrike in another week or two. But I've got to believe that CrowdStrike is position, you know, to be like a long-term monster stock, yeah. model book stock over time. Larry mentioned five years from now, we don't know what's going to go on, but uh, I'm a, I am own CrowdStrike, so I'm biased, right? But uh, I think it's going to be one of those real monster stocks. I don't know what the market cap is right now, maybe 70 billion, something like that. But, um, you know, it could be a 10 bagger from here. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you pointed out the uh, fundamentals, but anyway, I just wanted to Mm -hmm. Say that cybersecurity is thank you seventy seven billion market cap. So it's within that range of that near that fifty billion dollar market cap that I seem yeah. to like lately. Yeah. So yeah, it's got a lot of growth ahead of it. I'm also a um, I have a position in CrowdStrike. Great, great leader. I think it's a leader yeah. in cybersecurity. Well, you're always going to hear that it's overvalued. You know, and whenever a growth stock is growing, it gets you know, it gets high multiples, right? And so it's always fodder for the bears to say, you know, it's so overvalued, it's going to crash. But as long as they keep growing like they have been, um, that stock's going to go higher because um, it's got the sales and earnings growth. Well said. Yeah. So, but, you know, I like all three of them, but for me, I just, I own CrowdStrike because I'm, I'm biased. I like CrowdStrike. So mm -hmm. I like um, it too. I think, you know, from the, the chart, the chart makes it a leader, but even from the research, you know, because I read, I read a lot of like, you know, brokerage research, and they all say that CrowdStrike really is head and shoulders, because even in cybersecurity, there's all different types of business models. There's, you know, there's, it's like semiconductors, you know, not, they're all not making the same thing. And, and from what I read, and hopefully the market, you know, agrees with that come earnings time. But from what I read, CrowdStrike is really the, you know, is considered the higher echelon in mm -hmm. that industry. And the yeah. chart it's been a chart leader as well. You know, Palo Alto, it, it seems to me a couple months ago, didn't they report earnings like after the close on a Friday in the yeah. stock? So yeah. they, yeah. they, it seems that they do some kind of odd things from, mm -hmm. because I mean, everyone, I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, if this guy's yeah, yeah. going to report earnings, it's going to be, and the stock, you know, dropped quite a bit. And then they just seem to do some, uh, yeah. Some some different things out there. You know, yeah. Friday afternoon, you know, the bad news dump, it comes on Friday afternoons, right? When everybody's yeah. happy hour, nobody will notice, right? Right. Zscaler just uh, last Friday, the Friday before, announced that their CFO was resigning. They right. did it on Friday and people came in Monday and just sold the heck out of that stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, the Palo Alto CEO did say that um, smaller companies are taking market share from them offering uh lower prices so they're the largest cybersecurity stock so every other cybersecurity stock is the smaller lower <laughs> price, right? so I, I don't know who's offering the lower prices and i i don't know but we're going to find out you know uh, this is all uh public information so you know we're going to know and there's going to be many more quarters and years that they're going to be reporting so and um, marty I, i'm i'm thinking that cybersecurity is a lot like parachutes you don't necessarily want the cheapest one <laughs> yeah. yeah you want it's a you want the best yeah you want to be protected yeah yeah definitely did you ask me a question before i went yeah around? well well you know we're in tech somehow That's we so always come back to tech because tech is central to everything you know yeah. tech is everything we do everything has tech 
And so, you know, how about snow, data dog? Let's mm -hmm. talk about some software. I know that's your favorite area over there, right, Marty? Software. No, we talk about I, software. <laughs> I told you earlier, I, I, uh, I have trouble with software, just, you know, knowing for me, like Larry mentioned, if people are working, they're going to spend, it's easy for me to go to Wingstop or Texas Roadhouse or yeah. Chipotle and see, gosh, the line's out the door. These guys are doing pretty well, right? Right. Or even Elf Beauty, you can go to Ulta Beauty and see people buying and, and the large setups at Target. So that's kind of easy. The consumer mm -hmm. stock software is more difficult for me because I, I don't really know exactly what they do. Like um, Elastic is reporting tomorrow. Yes. I believe that's one that I like. And the reason why I like it is because they're like SMCI. They beat and raise every quarter mm -hmm. and the stock jumps. Yeah. I think it was like a 37% jump when it reported on December 1st. And then uh, the prior... Uh, report was on September 1st and it jumped like 20 something percent. So that's what you call a serial gap, mm -hmm. right? It keeps gapping higher. I mean, one of these days it won't gap so high, but and maybe tomorrow's the day, but that's definitely an AI play that's doing well. Elastic is one of the software names. Datadog, you mentioned, they just reported pretty solid report and then stock sells off. Some of the uh, reactions to uh, earnings reports have been... Um, pretty bizarre recently and i know it's due to the you know the reg fd where you get these big gaps up or the big gaps down and um but i think it's a if you read the report and you see the things sell off and you think hey that's a pretty good report that's an opportunity to buy datadog just pulled down to its um 50 simple moving average and then bounced right back up the next day um so maybe it's just profit taking i don't know but it was a strange reaction uh, Datadog is one that I, I like uh, a lot, as long as uh, as well as Elastic. And um, another one that Jensen mentioned was Snowflake, mm -hmm. which, which is all the bears are saying that thing's way overvalued. Mm -hmm. trade, I don't know, 20 times sales, you know, <laughs> as long as the stock's going higher, you know, you can't fight the trend. So that's Snow, another... Snowflake has a great chart. Beautiful. It's Snowflake. Great chart. They've got earnings yeah. coming up. I think is it this week that they report? Yeah, is it today? I think it's might, today. It might be. So it's I'm after curious. hours today. Yes, yeah, and, and right. Salesforce.com reports. So hopefully, but that Snowflake, it's it's coming out of about a an, an eighteen month weekly base. I really, see that. really yeah. good chart. But you just never know. That's the that's the tough thing, you yeah. know, because if if you had Palo Alto, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad I didn't, but I could have. You know, we've got CrowdStrike. Yeah. The Palo Alto chart, it, it looked very nice going in. Mm -hmm. It's a strong group. And, and you know, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, Palo Alto is probably going to put up a decent number. And I looked and it was down 10%, but, you know, in, in a second. And that's the thing you just don't know. And like Marty said, because of the regulations, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like the old days when they could whisper to people, hey, you know, it's not going to be a great quarter now. Everybody, pretty much, most people find out at the same time. Yeah, and it can be a disaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Snow. I have a position there, and I'm going to be watching that one. But yeah, you never know which way it goes. It looks beautiful. I'm looking at the chart right now. Um, looks beautiful, but you know, you you just don't. You know, we hope for the best, and it's it's related with that AI has beautiful yeah. data. Yeah. It's a unique company. Um, and I remember when it IPO'd, um, not too long ago, I think, what, what was it in the 21 or some 2020 or something? I, yeah, I, don't I know. think them, Palantir and Unity Software all came out like at the same time. Yeah. It immediately got involved with the bear market and sold off like 90%, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Market cap, 77 billion. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, great one over there. Palantir so, looks like that's if Palantir clears 26, that that chart could be ready to go. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I remember that one DPO. Uh, I remember playing that one um, after it came out. I think Marty, I think you said you play that one, too, after the DPO. Which one is that? Palantir. Yeah, I don't really care for Palantir. They have a, I, you know, I'll buy any stock that's going higher, but they have a real. Right. They have a lot of supply. They came to market with, um, I want to say the the shares outstanding in the float, you know, or a couple billion. <laughs> um, yeah, so it takes a lot of demand to move that stock, but a lot of people like it. And obviously, if it's moving higher, there must be a lot of demand to move all that supply. You know, stocks are all about supply and demand. And 
you have a lot of supply, you know, you need some demand to move mm -hmm. that. Stock. Yeah. So it's like a real fast moving stock because of all the, uh, the shares outstanding. But, you know, if you look at the chart, can I bring up a chart? Please. Do I have yeah. to share? And I have to share again, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you have a higher float, you know, yeah. you have. Yeah. I'm a slow learner, you know. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm one, I'm one of those, uh, you know, that the teacher had to tell, you know, over and over again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's wrong with this kid? Um, okay, there's Snowflake, yeah, the, the weekly chart, but we were talking about Palantir. Mm -hmm. So up here, Market Smith gives you the shares in the float and the shares outstanding, and mm -hmm. management still owns 7%. So they, they can dump, and Peter Lynch always said, you got to be mindful of how much management owns because they can dump it on the market at any time. You know, eventually they're going to sell, right? So, um, but anyway, it's just got a, a big float. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a lot of demand but you can see this there's a weekly chart there it's got this base on base pattern gapped higher on earnings after the last earnings report there's your gap uh what did it gap up 30 percent? that's a heck of a move for a stock that big mm -hmm. uh, for that much demand was it it's a it's a it's right there at 53 billion what, exactly what, i was just what, gonna right, say right in rows right in your right near exactly. wheelhouse but this is what it did is it, you know, made this move up and then pull back to a moving average, you know, shaking out some of the weak hands or the profit takers. And now it's, you know, like Larry says, we're above 26, I mm -hmm. think, it's going to move and get back to its, uh, you know, IPO price. What was it, $45 or something? Yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of charts like that, I just wait because Palantir is so volatile. Uh -huh. A lot of charts like that, I'll just set like, you know, a, a buy stop over the top of where I want to own it. And if it doesn't break out, then yeah. I don't buy it. But if it does break out, then I can get my position. So your magic number is 26 on Palantir. Man. That's that's the breakout line that I see, yeah. Oh yeah, I see that in MarketSmith. It's about there, right around there. It looks like it would be a good, nice breakout right well, above. What is it, uh, Dan Ives at um, Wedbush? <laughs> yeah. He called it the Messi of AI, right? Messi's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Yeah. So, so, okay. So we have coin. How about Coinbase, the miners? Uh, Anyone dabbling with the crypto? Larry? <laughs> I've got Bitcoin. So I've got IBIT and and I bought some this week. I didn't buy enough. You know, the and Marty knows this. The old saying is never when have your enough stocks are going ones. up, you never seem to have enough. Yeah. You never have enough and of the good ones, but you have too much down, of the bad ones. Yeah, when they're going down, you always have too much. Uh -huh. Way too much. Yeah. But I, I think I think Bitcoin's going to go a lot higher. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got IB. I don't get involved with with the miners. You know, they they can move really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, marathon micro strategy. Those those stocks really they're just kind of rocket ships. Yeah. But I just tend to focus more on just Bitcoin itself and and. Because I, I want to get the I want to get the the if I'm bullish on Bitcoin, I want to be sure that I get the move in Bitcoin. And the miners can be all over the place, but I, I think they're super high volatility. Yes. But longer term, I think Bitcoin's going to make new highs. So I think the miners are going to go with it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they're very volatile. I think Clean Spark just dropped big today. I don't know. They were running okay. really high. And then they took a big dive today. I think they still, yeah. You know what it is? Coinbase went down today. So Coin Coinbase went down. And from what I saw online, people were getting notices that said their account values were zero and mm -hmm. they couldn't execute wow. any transactions. So, so stuff like that, it'll give you a big shakeout. But these stocks, you know, if you look at the volatility, Clean Spark Super has a weekly high. volatility of 15%. The problem for, for me with a stock like that is because I use stop losses, it's mm -hmm. hard for me, unless mm -hmm. you just yeah. get it just right. Yeah. It's hard, you know, it's got a, a ATR is $2. So it's got about a 12% ATR. If, if I try to run, let's say a 10% stop and the stock trades in a 12% daily range, they could just um, hit my stop mm -hmm. just in the normal. But but long, I think Bitcoin, at the end of the day, I'm a Bitcoin bull, and I think it's going to go a, a, a lot higher. Yes. It doesn't mean that, you know, it'll have the pullbacks that it does, you know, along the way. But I think that that I'm, I'm a long-term Bitcoin bull. 
And I do think it's going to make new highs. So you're the anti Charlie Munger, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's you know, you can't, it, you know, at the end of the day, this this is a, you know, it's a new world and it's a mm -hmm. new technology. And, you know, I there's it's a digital world. And I don't know too much about the other coins. You know, I think Ethereum is probably going to work. Mm -hmm. But longer term, I, I think that, you know, Bitcoin has showed that it, it's here to stay. Mm -hmm. the, you know, Jamie Dimon says a lot of bad stuff about it. But JP Morgan's in there. You know, they're in the market. And and I just think it's, you know, it's another one of those like AI. I think the the upside potential is too big to not have at least some kind of position. Yeah, the one that you just showed, that's the uh, BlackRock one, right? That just... Uh, that's the one that I like, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I don't pretend to be a big uh, Bitcoin you know, bull, but I can recognize, you know, breakouts and trends. So um, right. definitely... Yeah, that chart, it's a really yeah. nice chart. Yeah. When, when these spot ETFs came out, they brought out 11 of them. And I just decided I was going to go with the highest volume one, because I don't really know much about, you know, the inner workings of Bitcoin. But I figure the highest volume one, the people that do know about it, that's the one they're buying. So I'm just going to yeah. follow them. Yeah, you don't need to know if you can read a chart. I know that right. was uh, the time when Mark Minervini was on uh, CNBC and he didn't know what Upstart did or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there was a meme out of it, but you don't need to know what they do. You know, if you can read a chart, you know, yeah. that's that's what he does. He's a technical guy. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I don't really know either, but I can spot a breakout and, you know, exactly. Bitcoin run. And if you look at its past, it really runs hard and runs fast and it runs for a long time. So, yes. Yeah. I don't know what the high was 69,000 or something. Yeah. 69,000. So, yeah. yeah. It'll probably take that out during this new leg higher. I, I would expect it to anyway. Yeah, that that's the way the chart the chart's setting up. It's got support right now at fifty thousand, you know. But the the way that the chart's setting up, it it's setting up for you know a pretty big move through new highs. Now I couldn't tell you, you know, you know, it's sixty and change right now. You know, it's sixty thousand and change. You yeah. know, it could pull back to whatever. Of course. But you know, I I try to put my stops, you know, at, at a place where I can ride through normal volatility and and hopefully not get hit well said well it's a very volatile asset it, it's actually its own asset class and i've spoken with michael saylor i had lynn alden on last week and i you know i i, I spoke to i spoken to many bitcoin um people and um, i'm also a bitcoin bull i think it's going to be alternative currency global reserve asset and I think it's it's going to go all time highs. It's 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 trying to get there right now, and I think it's going to go. And I think that you know I had uh, quite a few people. Uh, Hoffa, the the CFO, uh, I'm sorry, the CIO of Swan, amazing. He has a Nakamoto portfolio that he mm -hmm. runs, and it just shows how it's the greatest risk profile out there. And you know the the worst. Um, asymmetric risk that you could have is having no Bitcoin, they say. Right. Um, and it's it's important to have exposure. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's actually, you know, another thing that's very interesting about Bitcoin, it's that it's not that um, Bitcoin's going higher, it's that actually our currency is going lower. And, you know, it's a, di it's a, it's a different way of looking at things. Yeah. And, it's it's really fascinating technology, and um, I always tell everyone: study Bitcoin, understand it, learn it. It's very important, um, and you know, know what you're investing in. But not your keys, not your coins. They say so. I like to go directly to Bitcoin, and I I own right. Bitcoin, um, exactly. but I think that's a great ETF, Larry. Excellent yeah. thinking there um, with ETF, and um, but yeah, you know, Bitcoin is here to stay, and is the it's the one, it's the one and only. And there's other coins, it's ETH is a great functionality. Uh, my husband actually does also, um, you know, his Bitcoin law, he does crypto and you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, smart contracts and stuff. So yeah, he thinks ETH is excellent for the smart contracts and um, blockchain. And, uh, but Bitcoin is the one and only. So um, I'm very bullish on it. I think it goes much, it could go, it could go much higher from here. Yeah. There's some people saying, you know, million dollars, 1.5, 2, who knows, you know, sky You just don't limit. know. You just don't know. Um, but it has a lot of volatility. So you could have shakeouts, you know, 20% here and there, you know, you never know uh, right. how low it can go, but it seems the trajectory is up. Um, <laughs> but 
you know, we'll see. It's exciting times we live in. Yeah. It's it's great when they, you know, the people with ADHD, right? Because it trades 24-7, right? Oh, God. Yeah, it does. It does. It's always trading. So yeah, like, Larry yeah. mentioned that he likes to hold things for a long time. He doesn't want to look at them all the time. I like the golf. So I don't want to be on the golf course out there worrying about my, you know, my, uh, my biotech stocks, you know. Absolutely. So yeah, Bitcoin over time. It was created during the financial crisis, right? Where, you know. 2008, yeah. Yeah, the shenanigans of, you know, the you know, Wall Street. And uh, so, yeah, it was created out of that mess, right? And it's uh, really gaining momentum. So uh, you can't deny it. Um, yeah, know. we have monetary That's destruction. Monetary. And uh, so there's a need for something that can't be manipulated. And you no. can't keep printing it because there's a finite supply of 21 million. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's exciting, exciting times that we're in. Um, but a you know, golfer, I love that. So Marty is a pro golfer, right? You, how many oh, birdies okay. do you hit? <laughs> or you do Eagles, right? Are you hitting Eagles? No, no, I go, I golf for fun. I, I don't know. I golf for fun. Good for you. Yeah, it's so nice. This to... is the golf Mecca down here. There's golf courses everywhere. You know, you got to have your clubs in your trunk, you know, cause you never know when a golf game is going to break out down here. Love that. Um, yeah, no, it was just when we, when my wife and I retired, we just, you know, wanted to golf. So we, we moved here. So mm -hmm. that's all. Yeah. And Larry likes to spend time on his yacht. We're going to go meet up on yachts, right? Oh, is that right? We're you're going to do the boating you're... thing, right? Bro, that, that, must takes be off. Your, that must be your yacht. <laughs> <laughs> when our AI bubble forms, we're going to be on yachts. We're going to be uh, hanging out on yachts, right? In Florida somewhere. Something, yeah, something those like bubble that. heads will be right eventually, bro. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, eventually. It, but yeah, eventually. Remember when Greenspan said irrational exuberance in '96? Yeah, that's it what Larry like was saying. Four, We're like, yeah, yeah. It was almost four years later when the thing actually burst. You know, exactly. That's what Larry was saying. He's seeing '95, '96 huh. time period, right? Yeah. yeah. I, 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 yeah. I think right now, and Ro, we talked about this last week but the and i've got a podcast i'm doing tonight on this but in in 1999 there were 117 ipos that doubled mm -hmm. on their first day we haven't seen listen we haven't seen anything like that you know i went i went through the the numbers over the weekend and you know you had stocks back then with with no no sales forget about earnings but they didn't have sales and and you know, wow. listen, I was there. I was a new broker and we'd go in and we'd buy JDS Uniphase and it would go up so much and it was just so easy. And then and then on the way down, it was really bad. So I committed that I never wanted to get caught like that mm -hmm. on the way down. But, you know, the, the PE right now for the NASDAQ is 42. The PE at the top in 2000 was 175, you know. NVIDIA made more money in 20 days last quarter than Cisco made in all of 2000. And Ro, you, you brought this up on our podcast last week. The, the customers in the 99-2000, in the customers for all this telecom gear from Cisco and Nortel, they were a lot of startup companies. They were burning through cash. You know, now you look at the, at the customers for these GPU chips and, you know, you've got Meta, Amazon, you know, these are our cash rich companies. We just mm -hmm. looked at the NASDAQ, the top of the NASDAQ 100. Apple made 100 billion over the past 12 months. The entire NASDAQ 100 top 10 in 2000, I forget off the top of my head, they made like 25 billion. So the, the difference today is, you know, these are, these are our real companies that are making just, even Google for all the issues they've got, I think they made $73 billion over the trailing 12 months. I mean, these companies are Microsoft made $82 billion. The, the top 10 of the NASDAQ 100 now and the top 10 20 years ago, they had JDS Uniphase. The, in, in, 20, in 2000, the best year, right, the, the top of the bubble, JDS Uniphase lost $904 million that year. So... You know, back then, your top 10, they had Yahoo. Yahoo made $70 million. I mean, what's, I think Apple might make $70 million in two days, you know. So just the quality of the companies right now 
in the NASDAQ 100 at the top, even at the bottom. It's just a much higher quality company. So, you know, maybe maybe it's a bubble or maybe it will be a bubble or maybe, you know, maybe it's just, you know, a, a new technology and it's going to, you know, it's going to grow. And, you know, it, it's like Marty said, it, it's an uptrend. So let's stay with it as long as it works. And if things start to go sideways, we can always make adjustments. Well said. Follow price, right? And that's that's what you do. Um, well said. I think AI, you know, technology is deflationary. So um, and that can I think I met with Jim Ropel and about this. He said, oh, my, the, the multiples are going to, you know, be coming down because of the deflation from AI. It's it's going to be widening the, the market. It's going to make businesses expand and and uh, there's a lot of optimism and there's a lot of potential for the future. But like you said, Larry, um, you know, it's maybe the early innings. It reminds you of 96, 95, even if it's like 98, 99, you know, we, um, you know, there's still plenty of time left and you have that big, there's plenty of money to be made, in my opinion, uh, still. So, you know, this bubble talk, I actually think it's positive. Like Marty said, you know, you don't want everyone to be a bull because right. everyone's a bull. I mean, yeah, that's, that's that's what that's what makes markets. You know, there's always, you know, that's what makes markets. Exactly. You got to have the bears. Yeah. When everyone's bullish, it's time to go. Go hug your bear. We'll, we'll be, we'll <laughs> be friends golfing. with our bears. Now, he made a good point, though, that companies were borrowing, you know, getting loans. Yeah, they were speculative. So, they weren't cash yeah. generators. Now, now these are yeah, all cash generators. Flush with cash. Uh, you know, we've never seen a trillion dollar company like NVIDIA report earnings like they're doing triple digit sales and earnings growth this is this is phenomenal this is definitely a revolution and you think larry and i are bullish mr jim ropel is ultra bullish yeah <laughs> how did you how did you tame that guy <laughs> <laughs> he was so excited oh my god i love it It was a very exciting yeah. show <laughs> yeah, his enthusiasm's infectious for sure i love it got me so excited we were talking about xbi in november it was yeah. the beginning of november yeah I'm going to go out the next morning and buy. Yeah, it makes you want to go buy, buy it right there after hours. You're like, yeah. oh, I got to go, you know, it's 7.55. loan out on my house. <laughs> go buy SMCI. Absolutely. You know, um, that's a, a key point is that we're in a different world. You can't compare two time periods because there's so many different variables. And But these are the cash rich. These are the cash generators. I mean, the NVIDIA earnings report, I have not seen anything like it. And mm -hmm. it's just been amazing. They crushed everything. Triple digit growth. I was like 700 something percent earnings per share year over year. I mean, we're talking yeah. like crazy, like, wow. Yeah, but like Larry says, you know, you, you don't want to get caught in something like that. So you always want to be mindful and, mm -hmm. and understand both sides of the argument so you don't get caught, you know, because the market will do what it wants. Even if it thinks that it's great fundamentals, it can yeah. still sell off. It can yeah. still you know, and, and we've, you know, we've got our, our charts to rely on, but, but I would, I would recommend that, that anyone that thinks that this is a bubble similar to, to 2000, actually go back and just do the homework. You know, we did, we spent a, almost a week, you know, from start to finish with your podcast and then some more of the research we did. And, and I pulled, if you go on my Twitter page, we actually pulled the annual reports for every single company, the top 10 NASDAQ 100, you know, what were the revenues? What were the, you know, what were the earnings? And and I remember there were, you know, companies back then were were not making a lot of net income. No. You know, and and these companies, when I look at those numbers, it, it's hard to imagine that you know how much money Apple and Microsoft, between the two of them, they made $180 billion last year. And I think they're probably sitting on, you know, a, a pile of cash. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it's I, I I'm along. Absolutely. So um, if you want to go to Larry's Twitter page or X page, you got to give the uh, the handle there. Is yes. The, the blue chip what is daily. it at Blue Chip Daily? It yeah. is. It is at Blue Chip Daily. There you go. And that's I the website as well. The, I thought go you might bring that up. There's my website. I know there Marty's go. got a website too, but at, mm -hmm. at Blue Chip Daily is pretty much, I love uh, it. you know, it's- We call him Blue Chip Larry. Roe Ro calls me Blue Chip Larry. There you I, go. I love it. It's a great name. I thought cool. it was really so, cool. But yeah, you have a great... get informed, right, Ro? Yeah. Go there and get informed. It's great. You know, um, bluechipdaily.com, great website, great Twitter. 
Marty, you have MC stocks. Is that tell us MC about stock your stock charts? Yeah, I don't know. I just came with up with you know random MC stock charts. Like <laughs> I love it. And you have great you, I mean, the breakouts that you call out oh, are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I, I work real hard at this. You, you do, know? you like yeah. live with these charts. You're like yeah, always it's a labor around of, these charts. It's a labor of love, though, you know. So when you like to do something, it's not really work, right? It's just um, right. man, you get engrossed in this stuff. There's so much information. There's so much, but you need to simplify, ignore the noise. And you do, yeah. you both do an excellent job of that. I love that. You rely on your charts. You just look at the chart, you pull up the chart and yeah. you know, and um, you know, for me, it's charts, technical fundamentals are key, very important. And you look at the sentiment, the option flow, they all have a part in it. And the macro, you know, the macro is sort of detached from the markets back in 22, you know, the market would move with the CPI report because inflation and everything, but it's changed now. And now it's it's a different different time period. And well, so, you know. I just got to say the NASDAQ in 2022 had an 11-month bear market. It was uh, from peak to trough. It was a 38% drawdown. Mm -hmm. It's only happened three times this century, which is 24 years now. Wow. You know, it happened in, uh, you know, the, the dot-com crash, which is actually was a bubble. And then the financial crisis. And then we just had, we just coming out of a bear market. So mm -hmm. yeah. me, the bears are getting greedy. Like you're not going to have a bear market every other year. It's just, uh, yeah. it's, history tells us that, you know, history's on our side, but I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to debate people. I don't want to get involved. In right. Yeah. It's, you know, I want to make money. I'm just, you know, reading my charts, investing properly and, uh, and going both... golfing and not worrying about every darn tick, you know, it's going to exactly. go down. You know, it's not going to go up every week or every month. Yeah. The, trend, the trend is higher. So Yeah, uh, and you're so generous with all the amazing charts and information you both share. Larry yeah. and Marty, you're both awesome. You're my good friends on X and oh. uh, and real oh. life as well. I mean, you're both honorable, oh. great people. And this has been a true honor today to have been with you both because you're both my favorite, some of my favorite traders and um, both such nice people. That's... That's most yeah. important as you're Thank just you. very honest, straightforward, and, um, you know, very generous. And, uh, so well, you know, uh, my mentor, um, told me you got to do four things in life. You have to, um, you have to earn, you got to earn, you got to make a living you somehow. To, yeah. Don't be a bum. Don't be and a bum. It exactly. doesn't matter how much you make. If you make millions and spend millions, your net gain is nothing. Right. Right. So you have to earn, you have to save. Then you have to invest over time. Mm -hmm. Your investments are going to, you know, be, they're going to provide you with a lot of wealth that you probably couldn't even imagine over time. Time is key in the market. And then the fourth pillar is to give back to charity. So you have to give back to your community. And, um, you know, if you don't do it financially, you can work at a local food bank or, you know, if you have funds, you could donate to St. Jude's or whatever, um, whatever your favorite charity is. Um, so yeah, that was just kind of instilled in me. So um, that's so beautiful. Just, yeah, that's kind of how I live my life. So, and then I like to golf a lot. <laughs> that's awesome. Love that. How about you, Larry? What are things that that you uh, follow and and do? You know, I, I'm 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 pretty simple. I don't know how to golf. Well, I'm gonna have <laughs> to get out there with Marty, and he can show me how to do it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I, I work a lot you know, which yeah, that, like Marty said, you know, it's a labor of love. But other than that, you know, I like to spend a lot of time with the kids. You know, my kids are, you know, various stages from 13 years old up. Uh, you know, I, I love football. So football season's over. Mm. But really just, you know, hanging out with with my wife and the kids. And, you know, when I was younger, and I used to live in South Florida, I, I got to do all the you know, the South Florida, you know, the beaches and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm I'm older now. And, uh, you know, I, I just like to, you know, I just like to, you know, spend some time with the family and some quiet times and look at some stock charts. Love that. That's yeah. beautiful. Great. Well, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, okay. Lasting parting words. What are your thoughts? And I'm going to start with you, Larry, because we started with Marty earlier. Okay. Um, you're thinking with the markets now, Next few weeks, next few months. I know you rely on your charts, and if anything changes, you follow your charts. But what are your thoughts just going forward? So I'm I'm bullish on four things, and I'm worried about two things. Mm. So I'll start with 
I'm, yeah. I'm bullish on the charts. I'm bullish on the jobs market. I'm bullish on the economy and I'm bullish on the way that the earnings reaction overall. The mm -hmm. two things I, I'm worried about is I'm worried about inflation because because the, if there's anything that could knock the, you know, the bull market, the uptrend, whatever we want to call it, well, I'll call it a bull market. You know, if there's anything that could knock it off, it would be inflation mm -hmm. because that's that's the real bugaboo because mm -hmm. the in, the inflation dictates what the Fed does and you know, AI is great and everything is great, but we don't want to mess with the Fed. You know, don't mess with the Fed. So CPI came in higher than forecast. Mm -hmm. uh, PPI came in higher than forecast. The market sold off on CPI. It really didn't react too much to the PPI, but tomorrow is the big one. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because the, the core, the 12 month core PCE, that is the Fed target. Their target's not CPI. It's 12-month core PCE. Powell said that in their last press conference. Yeah. So, you know, I'm cautious going in because if we get a higher than extend forecast reading, then the market's not going to like that. And then, you know, we've got to worry about what the Fed does. So it's inflation and interest rates. So those are the, you know, bond yields. Those are the two things that, I'm most cautious about because everything else I think is a very good backdrop, mm -hmm. but I, I just want to avoid any upside surprises in inflation. And I, I don't want to see bond yields break out over 440. So if we can avoid those two things, I think we're, I think we're set up really nicely. Very nice. Yeah. That fiscal spending can definitely fuel that inflation Yeah, um, for sure. So that's definitely something to watch. We have sticky pockets all throughout. How about you, Marty? Uh, yeah, I have two new sayings that I just created. <laughs> Never There's give up. Motto. Never give <laughs> up, right? Yeah, that one was our school motto. Um, <laughs> but uh, the trend is your friend. You know, I shared mm -hmm. that with you earlier. I love that. We got to write now, that down. I, wrote it down. I have a new one. Write it down. Don't fight the Fed. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm that's gonna awesome. Patent those two. What do you think? Got to patent them. Yeah, trademark them. Yeah, no, Larry's trademark right. Them. If you live through the 70s, you know that inflation is just a killer. <laughs> but, you know, I wouldn't read too much into one, you know, especially the January, whatever, CPI mm -hmm. guy. Um, the market absorbed it okay. I mean, we've had a nice January, February. Um, but definitely, if inflation continues, and I listen to these reports from Pepsi and General Mills, because food is a big... Part of it, you know, oil is pretty much contained, and the gas prices around here are. You know, I'm not going to complain, knock on wood, but you know they've been pretty uh, tame. So I'm thinking that inflation, you know, is is going to be pretty tame over time. It's been trending lower, so yeah, you definitely don't want to see it spike up for like three or four months in a row. That would be a real problem and could derail uh, the bull market for sure. Larry makes a great point there. Uh, definitely something to watch, um, but. You know, if you're if you're just following the charts and following the trend, if something does happen, you're going to know it. You're going to know to get out. You know, right? And and don't fight it. If this thing starts, you know, they they start raising rates instead of you know. I think the market is, is anticipating three rate cuts this year, which I you know, in, if if you live you know like in the seventies, I mean, this is a pretty reasonable interest rates we have right now. Oh yeah, five like, and a quarter. You know, mm -hmm. I mean. It's just that they that. were so low for so long that people got spoiled. Mm -hmm. it. It's recency bias, yeah. Yeah, and they raise them so fast, you know. But you know where they're at right now. We got a good economy, like Larry says. The earnings are coming in great. Um, Job market. The reason to lower them or raise them, you know, they could just be status quo for a while. I think the last time they raised was July of last year. I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's last summer. Yeah, so, yeah, nine months or so. So maybe they just stand pat for a while and you know like we've heard about this recession that's coming for years and years and years yeah <laughs> it never mm -hmm. come people people keep asking like can they can they manufacture this soft landing i i think we already landed right mm -hmm. <laughs> we yeah, feet on the ground we already landed and people are expecting this big recession or all these rate cuts like maybe we just go status quo all year and uh you know let the good time grow it is an election year so Oh, yeah, right. and I don't, I don't, I think it's a, it's a healthy market if we don't need to rely 
on rate cuts because I don't want to rely. I just want to see the Fed not raise anymore. Right, right. If they cut, mm -hmm. maybe it's good. Maybe, the you know, yeah. we don't know why they cut. If they cut because yeah. the economy falls off a cliff, that's not great. No, so, that's not good either. I, you know, I, jobs stay good. So I'm not relying on the rate cuts, but I, I think as long as they just don't hike, and that's why I just want to see inflation, right. you know, tomorrow just kind of, you know, hopefully it's just a non a non event. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's what we're going to get. That's why I showed you that chart from the 2017. We just have these mild little pullbacks. Yeah, I like that yeah. chart. That was brilliant. I like that, Marty. Uh, 2017. Hopefully, we continue in that same similar path. That'd be great. It's not just a hat rack. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, Marty, please tell us about how people can find you, your handle on Twitter. Or oh, X. Marty Jargon. That's it. That's who I am. So, um, you know, I just got on Twitter to joke around, you know, because you're I'm funny, class clown, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, then I was because I was I was on there like oh seven or when it first came out. I don't know when it first wow. came out. An early, early adopter. Wow. Yeah. And then my brother was going like, wow, you get all this stuff on there, like all this financial stuff. And people are, you know, I go, oh, this is cool, you know. So it's really become a valuable tool, you know, kind of like the uh, what the town hall where people get together and, you know, kind of chit chat and share ideas, you know, so it's pretty cool. I will never share my P and L on there though. And those people who do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no way. And you have a YouTube channel too. Oh yeah, I do. You know, uh, for my site, the IT guy said, if I just do a zoom uh, video and then put it on the site, it eats up a bunch of data. So he said, go to YouTube and then put it on a file there. And then it takes up less data. So that's why I started doing YouTube videos just yeah. for my site. And um, yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy. It just converts it over. I'm not an IT guy. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm I'm not tech savvy at all. But uh, but I, I know to do what I'm told. So they told me to do that. So that's <laughs> why I started YouTube. <laughs> You're so funny. So my wife might my wife might differ, but uh I usually do what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so funny. Larry, tell us how everyone can find you. I know we said blue chip daily. Yeah. So um, and your website and your YouTube as well. Yeah, so I coordinated everything. So my my website is bluechipdaily.com. And then my Twitter, I'm I'm most active on Twitter. I really like to post, you know, and, and chat with everyone. But my YouTube and my Twitter is at Blue Chip Daily. Love it. And Blue Chip Larry and Master Markets Marty. Yeah, master of disaster. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure. This has been so much fun. I think we should probably try to do this maybe quarterly or something and go sure. over the markets. Any Hopefully, anytime. I would love this. This is this has been a lot of fun. And we've we I think we did a great deep dive on a lot of different sectors and stocks and leaders. Um, it's been great. Thank you so much.